Syosset Lanes in Syosset, Long Island. Just a quick drive from New York City. ESPN's continuing live coverage of the PBA Tour brings you the Cambridge Credit Classic. Five bowlers look for a title and valuable tour points. Now let's meet our five finalists. From Titusville, Florida, making his sixth television appearance. He won the 1999 National Senior Doubles title, Jason Hurd. The winner of last year's PBA World Championship. He has five career titles from Newark, New York, Doug Kitts. He has four career titles, including the 1994 PBA National Championship from Woodstock, Illinois, near Chicago, Dave Traber. From Seattle, Washington, he won this season's opening event in Japan for his first title in a decade. Seventh in the PBA World Rankings, Hugh Miller. He is looking to become a 13th player to win 20 titles. A two-time player of the year who sits seventh on the all-time earnings list from Claremont, Florida, it's Norm Duke. Those are the five finalists for the 2002 Cambridge Credit Classic in the championship round. Here's our Cambridge Classic matchups. Our wild card sees Jason Hurd and Doug Kent each in search of their first title of the year. Dave Traber takes on Hugh Miller, who won earlier in the year in Japan. And Norm Duke has clinched a spot in the semifinals. Randy, we are ready. Wild card match. Hurd and Kent. Jason lost in the round of eight last night, but due to the fewest match play losses from the round of 32 best of seven on to the round of eight best of five, he's in the wild card. This card comes in late. Ball off his hand a little quick. And when that happens, you don't get the lift, you don't get the revs on the ball, the ball doesn't grab, goes a little bit further right. In this week's lane conditions, Dave Ryan, very difficult, very tough. Only a two, 203 average to make it to the round of 64. Well, pattern A this week covers the mark. Come on. On lane 27, nerves for Jason early, do you think? Always. Yeah. First couple of shots, live television, you're going to be nervous. But the guy that can manage his nerves and make that nervous tension work in his favor, that's the guy that's going to make the better shots. Newark, New York. It's just about halfway between Rochester and Western New York and Syracuse in the central part of the state. Five hours from here or so. Pocket for Doug Kent. Good start for him. Using the same ball he used last night against Chris Barnes in a great match where Doug okay, struck out. The first shot out of the way. See? Is that first shot? Get the, he gets that first shot out of the way. He gets a strike. So you see what he's done this week. Fair conversion's a little iffy, but with the lane conditions being tough, we include splits, and there's a lot of splits left. Anyway, the spawn that he's using, he actually drilled for the match against Chris Barnes last night, and what a match, five games. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Special layout for Doug Kent with that ball. Pocket for him on lane 27. He looks good. A unique layout, and the players that saw that layout said he was, they thought he was crazy. That was for you, Jacob reference to his 11-year-old son, Jacob, back home in Newark, New York, watching. Doug owns a bowling center there. Speaking of unique, Jason Hurd has the rather unorthodox approach, the seven-step that he's just been using recently, and he comes in high there. 210 average, which was exceptional this week. You see that very low strike percentage. Oh, oh, only 48% high scoring weeks. That number's up to about 70%. Little mini shuffle at the end of the delivery right on the approach toward the foul line. And what I'm seeing early on, Dave, in the first couple of shots that Jason's thrown, and this is what happens. You get anxious, you get into a hurry. Jason's getting the ball into the swing a little bit too soon. And what you watch for is right at the foul line, how he falls off the shot. He's not able to, to hold his balance. You see him falling off, that means he's getting the ball into the swing early. 
29-27. Avoids a disastrous 4-10. Just has the 10 pin to deal with for a mark. That shot there he actually posted. It was a better shot, just drifted a little bit high, but he kept his balance. I think that's the key. Jason needs to stay in control, stay on balance. Pretty good there, only missing two single pin spares for the week. Drifts to the left, and then will shuffle just as he delivers, picks up a 10 pin for a mark. Perhaps a little self-motivation from Jason Hurd trying to get himself going. Maybe the nerves have dissipated for him. We'll see. Looking for a triple to start the match is Doug Kent. Strike, 24-pin lead. Get up! Yeah! Baby. He's got that. Yeah! Doug Kent going much straighter than Jason Hurd, playing around the eighth board. Second arrow... Ball holds line, keeping his hand underneath it. You know, when the lanes are tough, the best way to the pocket is a straight line, and he's, he's that's what he's using right now. Has not won since the World Championship in March in Toledo. He was telling us last night, eight events ago. It has been that long. It wasn't this calendar year, but for him a lifetime ago. Roll, roll. Yeah! Urging it into the pocket, and the ball responds. When he said roll, what he meant was he wanted that ball to grab the lane so it would turn up and get into the 1-3 pocket. Here he goes. He's talking to it. Made some great shots last night. Fifth game against Chris Barnes. A little double wood, 2-8 there for Hurd, who's not quite found his ideal path into the pocket. He hasn't found his rhythm, his rhythm from start to finish. A little too fast, then he slows it up a little bit. And what happens is that makes the ball arrive at the bottom of the swing at, at different places. The release isn't clean. This week, had to make really good shots. It'll be very difficult as he does pick up the mark the way Ken has started with a four-bagger here today in the wildcard match. Rick Steelsmith, the first to go down in the round of 32, best of seven, and then Dave Kraber, your roommate, won the round of eight match, but Hurt gets into the wild card because he had the fewest match play losses from the round of 32 through the round of eight. Just four, and Leto on a Celli not far behind. In a big hole, 10 pin. And his best shot of the match, he told me last night that the key for him that was, was he, better. He had to, it sure was. He had to make his arm swing from the top to the bottom as smooth as possible. If he didn't, he grabbed it at the bottom. He got too fast, big grab. And with as many revs as Jason Hurd has, that ball tends to break loose down the lane. The ball coming right at you. Picks up his mark. Jason coming to us from Titusville, Florida, about 30 miles east of Orlando and near the Kennedy Space Center, where he can watch the launching of the space shuttle occasionally. That's quite a treat. How many people could say that? What a wake-up call that would be at 6 a.m. having a rocket go up. Meanwhile, red hot Doug Kent. Looks for a five-bagger to start the wild card match. And a 47-pin lead with another strike. Oh, seven pin. Last night in the match against Chris Barnes, Doug Kent took a 2-0 lead. Chris Barnes comes back and wins the next two matches, or the next two games, rather, forces a game five. Doug looked completely lost. So what he did was he took that same exact bowling ball he's using now, threw it 800 miles an hour on the right lane, straight at the 1-3 pocket, and on the left lane, he hooked it the entire lane. He went from about fifth arrow after the 10 board, struck out ninth, 10th, and 11th to force Chris Barnes to double in the 10. Chris left the 10 pin on his second ball. That's how Doug got here. Hi, Jason. He is focused. Back home in Florida, his wife Kim, stepchildren Katie and Anthony watching, and a big get-together down in Florida for Jason at River Lanes in Titusville. All rooting him on, but he has run into a difficult opponent in this wild card match.
A four bagger to start, five of six strikes for Doug Kent, and he has got a 36 pin lead over Jason Hurd from Titusville, Florida. It's the wild card match. We're underway on Long Island. Live coverage of the PBA Tour continues right here on ESPN Next. Middle of the wild card match. The 28th time the PBA has been on Long Island, dating back to 1963. We're glad to return. Welcome back, everyone. Dave Ryan and 2002 Pepsi Open champion, Randy Peterson. Congrats again from our entire crew. An amazing moment for you last week. How was the week after you won until now? It, it's been truly amazing. You know, obviously, the, uh, you know, the support from my family and friends at home, my family here at ESPN. But I tell you what, the response and the congrats that I got from the players out here was truly overwhelming, something I'll never forget. All right, take care of that trophy. <laughs> Try to get back in the winner's circle again. Lane pattern A for oil this week. Yeah, lane pattern A for I don't know where I'm going to stand or throw it. That's why the players today are playing all over the lane. You're going to see Dave Traber firing it real hard from out. You see Doug Kenny's going around the 10 board, the second arrow. Hugh Miller, our left-hander, is going to be playing in between the first and second arrow on the left side and that big hook ball from Jason Hurd. This week, you could play just about wherever you wanted. Remember, the ball looks for friction for change of direction. This week, friction all over the place. For more on the lane conditions, all five of the oil patterns, log on, PBA.com. Best website out there for bowling fans. Back to third. Lane 28, Ooh, 10 pin. Yeah, that's the frustrating part about Bowling in general, Jason, first couple of shots, a little iffy. The last two shots he made were about as good as he can throw it, and he gets nine for his effort. Picks up the spare. Talked about the great start for Doug Kent with a four bagger, five or six frames of strike, and nothing for her in the strike department through six. No open frames, but it's a big yellow climb when Doug has bowled so well. And Doug's hit the pocket every ball. There you go. He's got one. <laughs> got a little tip of the cap here. Okay, is this one going to strike? Oh, really? Finally. Let's do. Jason very confident in speaking with him last night about the wood approaches here at Syosset Lanes. Says he feels more comfortable, but it's been a tough <laughs> battle. Ooh, Kent looking for the messenger across the deck, and it just misses the 10 pin. Uh, it's just a classic style, a little later timing than most. But I think that's what makes him so good. And the thing that I really like is you could put a plate of food on Doug's head. That head is so steady from start to finish. That's, he's able to keep his eyes focused on his target. Doug Kent took last week off as he picks up his mark. Did not bowl in the event you won in Philadelphia. Very frustrated, really. In speaking with him last night, complete exasperation about the state of his game. Went home to Newark, New York, and worked with the video camera and some serious results. Worked every day for two hours, saw exactly what he was doing on video. He said he was walking away from his swing. So his body's going one way, his swing direction was going another. He could never get the ball to go to the right consistently. Four pin. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's so good. You oh. felt great about that ball. This is like the reverse messenger. Coming from the right. You hear Doug, he said, great shot, great shot. And you know what, when players of this caliber, these guys don't lie to themselves. When they make a bad shot, they're the first ones to tell you. And when they make a good one, it's good. Trying to keep it at 100%. Four pin. As that, Doug tells us it took him one shot. Watching the video that we talked about when he took his time off last week at his home center, one ball to realize the approach, the swing, alignment, footwork, all sorts of trouble. But he has made some major adjustments. Oh, 
Now 26 if he can strike here. Yeah. Catching some fire as Jason Hurd. Never know. That's right. You never know. You just keep striking. You put pressure on your opponent. We saw it all week long in the matches. As you see, the march to the PPA World Championships. Chris Barnes will actually overtake Walter Ray Williams Jr. Due to, the, to his great performance this week. He made the round of eight, as we talked about. Norm Duke bolting to fourth. He and Hugh Miller earning big points this week and making the show. Four pin. Ball change on the left lane from where he, what he started with. You can see he's making much better shots now. He's posting a little bit better. That ball just drifted slightly high. Hey, break. In time. Let that fall. Yeah, trip four would have been real nice there. You see that trolling? You saw that big hole in the middle of that grip. Doug's roommates, John May and Patrick Allen, told us that he's a student of the game. They love rooting with him because they, because of his knowledge. They just basically suck the knowledge right out of him. Four pin. John May said that the worst part about rooming with Doug was that they don't get to room with him every week. Johnny May bowled great this week, just missing the round of 32 due to nothing but bad luck. I bowled right next to him. Missed by two pins, John May did. I'd like to see John on the show. Not yet. Doug's first of this season. Comes today. Owner of a 36-lane bowling center back home in New York. Upstate from here. Picks up the four for another mark. Just needs eight. Lost our lights. Shut out. We have no lights. Appears to be a light problem on the TV pair. And we'll get that taken care of as soon as possible. Randy, have you ever been as exasperated as Doug was? Take a week off or two in the tour in your career? You know what? Uh, back in 1990, uh, I took a week off, right. came back, Never mind. and actually ended up winning the Quaker State Open. Got a lesson from Don Johnson. I know he's watching. Don, we love you. Hall of Famer gave me a lesson. I took the week off prior to that, came back and won Quaker State Open in, in Dallas, Texas. So I'll tell you what, taking that week off, man, does a lot of good, for, not only for your physical game, but your mental game as well. Mm. Watch for the SBN in six. He is focused. Another four pin. And that's what he needed. You heard him yelling, no, no, because that ball was drifting high, but because of how well the ball's getting out of his hand and the equipment he's using and the way he's playing the lanes, he was able to get away with that. He is off to the semifinals. For those who have bowled the wild card in the semis, three have won a title since the new match play format was introduced to the PBA September of last year. Doug Kent would love to become number four. seven up there but it won't matter because Doug Kent will advance on to the semifinals with a 224 Fraber is waiting along with Hugh Miller next round the other semifinal will fast track to the end here with Jason Hurd who had a great week 27 year old from Titusville Florida he did the Super Cooper trip for the ninth. It was his first TV show since February of this past season in Burlington, North Carolina. Jason's bowled well this, this year. He's only missed one cut. Yep. Cashed in seven of eight. He's competed in. All right. Now, great show. He didn't remind you of uh, some fishing trip that I promised him, did he? Something about lending his you lending uh, him a boat to use or so. 
long fishing expedition. <laughs> Saltwater fishing for Jason Hurd. Loves get out to the open ocean and bring in the big one. Twist the fish. <laughs> Looks like Doug Kent is a big Buffalo Bills fan. He is off the semifinals. Next, it's Draver and Miller head to head. Last year here on the island, Tommy DeLuce Jr. won his first ever tourney held here at Syosset Lane, defeating Chris Barnes in the final. And the real final held the Mohegan Sun Resort in Uncasville, Connecticut. We're back on the island again today. Dave, we woke up this morning, and the first thing you said to me was, you didn't sleep well last night. Why is that? Well, you were keeping me awake all night. You were snoring and whistling and everything. Wait, wait a minute. Nobody snores like you do. You like, it sounds like a hungry bear. Come on. No, come on. You were bad. Who's the one that wears earplugs? You do. Exactly. Why is that? I don't know. Because you snore. Anyway, let's back to serious stuff. Tell, tell me about your strategy uh, in lane play today on the championship pair. Well, I'm going to do what you did last week. Instead of you piped it, I'm going to flame it up there. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave. Good luck. Dave Traver hasn't won in four years, Dave Ryan. But with a win today, we can be rooming again in two weeks at the TSC. In Uncasville, Connecticut, the Mohegan Sun. Randy, you earned that right by... Winning last week at the Pepsi Open in Philadelphia. Four career titles for Dave Traber, 39 years old, from Chicagoland, just a few miles south of the Wisconsin border. Seventeenth year on tour, trying to get back in the winner's circle. Throwing that ball hard. Flamethrower, right? Oh, yeah. He's, we, we call him Slinger, Flamethrower. Head in the gutter, Kirk. The one thing you have to say about Dave Traber is that, you know, even though he likes to go straight, he's very good at what he does. We call him slinger, flamethrower, we call him lots of things. <laughs> some you can, some you can't mention here on TV. <laughs> Your road roommate on the PBA tour. My new nickname for him is Pine Tar. Because? Well, he, what he does when he gets in the match plays, he takes a bowling ball and he sands it with about 120 sandpaper grit, which is very, very coarse. The ball looks like a piece of charcoal, and he burns up the outside part of the lane to give him a little advantage. Only left for the show is 46-year-old Hugh Miller in the pocket. And a great start for him. He told me last night he has to keep the ball in between the sec first and second arrow on the left side part of the lane. The other thing he has to do is he has to keep his hand underneath the ball to keep it from changing direction too hard. Very good week for him. I'd like to increase that strike percentage in the championship round, hoping to bowl in and win two matches. And take home his 11th career title. Oh, wow. tough split. Ouch. Ball cuts right through the heart, leaving the 4 6 10. There's only one thing to do here throw it really hard at these two pins. Hope one of them comes out, and takes care of the four pin. Leaves the four foot open early, but it is early if you're going to have one. Now's the time to do it. Well, if you're going to have one, you hope it's only one and you hope it's real early. And this guy's going to bring the high hard heat from right around the first arrow. Traver's worked very hard the last three weeks with not only myself, but with Tim Chris. Almost I'll coming it. in a little high, but I'll he'll take anything. I don't care. <laughs> take the break. You heard it from him himself. Oh, yeah. You ought to hear him when we're in the room. <laughs> that was a great case. As you see, the strike percentage. Traver had the highest strike percentage this week. What I was going to say was you ought to hear him in the room when we're playing Yahtzee. We do a little gambling with Yahtzee. Very small. I understand those are high-stakes well, games. No, of course shh, very, very small. But you ought to hear him when he gets a Yahtzee. It's the same thing. That comes in light. Just missed it. Yeah, and he, you know, he didn't take advantage of a really good break that he got in the second frame. Gets this ball right. And there's not a lot of friction to the right. He's got to go straight, much straighter than that because of how hard he throws it. Not enough friction created to get that ball to hook up to the 1-3 pocket. Beautiful mark, Dave Traber. 
All right. You know what he needs to do now is take a real deep breath and and just back her down a notch. You got to get the ball to the left side of the head pin and throw it over in the 10. Did it perfect. He knows by making that washout, he's still ahead in the match. His very words a moment ago, settle, relax. Back to lefty. Misses the pocket. Easy spare. Great start on TV for Hugh Miller. Four for four. His victory in Japan, one of the two events overseas, broke a long streak, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. A decade without a tour win for Hugh Miller. That was black and white TV back then, wasn't it? I think it might have been. Leaves the 10, another open. Oh, man. Well, you want to try to cover all four pins of the ball? And that ball didn't Sorry. get far enough to the right. It's close to making it. The door opens a little wider for Dave Traver. That's the pocket. His win at the Shin Yokohama Prince Hotel Bowling Center in Japan was a two-game total like pin count. You got you know, the, it's the same on the left side as it is on the right. You, you, you have to make good shots. There's no freebies. You can't throw the ball all over the lane. He dodged bullets all week long. He just grinded and gutted it out to get to this point. Speaking of dodging bullets. Dave Trevor, your roommate barely made it into the round of 32. Qualified 32nd. Had How about the, that? The number one seed, Brian Kretzer, and Dave carried his equipment out to the out to his truck. Found out he made it and had to bring all his equipment back in. The key for Dave is he's got to keep his hand underneath, but a little on the side on the way back. That keeps his hand underneath, keeps him from over grabbing it. Carried all his stuff out to the truck, brought it all back in. There you go. Yeah. He knew it. Found out he made it. Both the number one seed, Brian Kretzer, and sweeps him in four That's games. That's what we're talking about right there. Very good week for Hugh Miller. 10 and 5 in match play, a 210 average on this oil pattern. Strikes on lane 26. So, what you're seeing here is a, a little bit to the left of target is okay. That gets the ball into the switch zone, light pocket. A little bit further to the left, the ball doesn't hit the head pin at all. So, you see what Q's done this week. Last match going 3 and 0. Oh. We should mention, you had a 300 game this week. Got yourself into the round at 16 before running into Pete Weber. Ran into Pete. Pete took care of me the old-fashioned way. Good shot there. After a couple of opens, a three-bagger for Hugh Miller. Yes. And he has four strikes in six frames. How much will the open frames hurt him later in the match? We'll find out. Randy's roommate, Dave Traber, trying to get back in the winner's circle. First time in a long time. He faces a lefty when we continue. We started with 144 of the world's best bowlers here on Long Island. We're down to the final five, now the final four. Wild card match complete. One semi is halfway through. Let's check in with the days in on the road. We are headed to the Empire State Open Bowlers Club in late from the final zone arena setting on the campus of Siena College in Loudonville. That'll be a lot of fun. Back-to-back -back arena settings, in fact, and there are tickets still available for both of those events. The TOC and the Empire State Open, PBA.com, log on to the game's best site for tickets. Also, some regional information for you in Reno. <laughs> Continuing with this semifinal. Randy, at this point, halfway through the match, for Miller being the only lefty, the oil pattern, how is it affected? How does it change his game at all? Well, I don't 
usually it would be an, it, it just depends on how tough or how easy the lanes are if they're lanes are good yeah. they stay better longer on the left side because there's only one person bowling on that side but i don't think there's any advantage for hugh miller because i think the lanes are equally tough on both sides a great shot out of the commercial break for for dave traber you know a lot of times after that commercial break you you settle in a little bit, you get a little lethargic, you get lazy. That was a good shot. Needs to follow it up with one more right here. Looking for a four bagger and a 33 pin lead. Yes! Got it. We're showing you round of 16. That's it. And round of eight, yes. Matt Quay. Results? The outside heat right around the sixth board, fifth board, which would be the first arrow. Nice and direct, just a little pinch of back end. And you saw Randy Peterson who wants to go on the That's got a hook. Wow. Gets the five. Well, that's one that he got a little bit wide. Looked like he hit it a little bit harder with his hand at the bottom, which made the ball grab and hook back. Got it in the half pocket swish zone. And then we call, watch the five pin. We call that the paralyzed five. Gets slapped silly and then just barely falls down. <laughs> He'll gladly take it no matter how that five goes down. It's not how, it's how many. So he has a four-bagger now, right back in the match, despite the two opens early. You said they have to be early. That's back right on up. two. And there's oh. it. Missed That's the pocket again. Lane too. That's amazing. That ball just looked like it got out of his hand Not good. poorly. He's got to get the ball to the right side of the head pin, just like just the opposite of what of what Dave Traber did in the third frame. Same identical washout, just on the other side. Hmm. I think I'll move a board to two left here. Moves a board to two left, uses the same strike target, or just a little bit right of strike target. Cover. Good pin action. Spraying it just missed the seven, not by much. However, a third open of the match, and Traber sees the path to the finals get a little smoother. Well, he's really... He, Golden opportunity coming up for Dave Travis. You see him banging that thumb hole with rosin. He wants to get a good, secure grip. It's that thumb hole, but now once you get that on the ball, you have to wipe it off. You can't put a foreign substance on the outside part of the bowling ball. Looks for a five back. That's a right yeah. yeah. And that's a way to take advantage of it. Take advantage of the open frame by Hugh Miller. Keep the pressure on. But you know what? What goes around comes around. Advantage Dave Traver, the best Hugh Miller can do if he strikes out is 211. All Dave Traver has to do is stay behind the foul line and keep it on the lane. Watch it with ESPN in sync. Oh, eight pin. That's a shocker. I always have to leave one sometime. <laughs> hey, hey, Pods, just cover this bear. It has a good shot. It's a real surprise. There you go, Mike. There you go, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure who he's talking to, but it's probably a friend of his back home. Change. Mom Jeanette, brothers Dale, Daryl, and Dean. By the way, all the boys in that <sighs> family in alphabetical nice. order. Named that way. They're all Milwaukee, by the way, watching. Dave. Reopens doing in Hugh Miller today in the semifinal. Boy, all of a sudden, I'm not grinding them out. I'm either strike or no count today. What happened to all those clean games? Oh, well. He's really been up and down. That's about bowling. You never know what's going to happen. Boy, is that, that's, uh, that's hitting the nail on the head there, Hugh. He grinded all week long, grinded and grinded, and then when he did catch a pair that was a little bit more forgiving, he both big that's games. A good Take a look at the approach of Hugh Miller, and I want you to watch how he goes dead right his first couple of steps, and then he'll walk back into the swing. Very unusual start. Those first couple of steps go dead right. Maybe it's his looks. He just makes me bowl bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a good time out there. Yeah. I don't care. 
Now that's pretty good there. Get really? some help with the eight pin. How about the trip six eight? Of course, it always happens when it doesn't matter. You hear somebody say that's a that's a good one there, and it goes high. That's not that's not a good sign. He has been fighting quite a cold. <sighs> Told us this morning when he got to the center, just not feeling well. Missed his usual morning workout. He and Tom Baker and Amelotta Monticelli are the fitness freaks of the tour. Well, at age 46, I tell you what, if he wasn't in great shape, he, he wouldn't get to this point. You talked a lot about his conditioning and what he's, I mean, the guy runs marathons and very impressive. He's, uh, he's just in great shape. Just one single pin, Dave Traber. Traves keep it on the lane, and, and you'll advance. All right, all right. Ringing 10 pin for Dave Traber. Now, the, the most important thing is you hit the pocket every ball, put the third frame, you, you know, caught his breath coming out. Again, we talked about guys being nervous to start. Gained his composure, and he, he flushed every ball after that. And then they want to go Seattle. to the Monster Jam, so I got to win first. Next time, a couple weeks, maybe in Tacoma. Talking to his wife, Donna, four kids back home in the Great Northwest who are watching. Wow. Thanks. Thank you. There you go. One more match, one more. And we'll see Randy in the TSC. There you go. The roomies could be together. Last week it was our Randy Peterson, his roommate, bowling well today. Lady Liberty, just 45 minutes by car to Long Island, where Doug Ken, who has gone from frustration of a poor showing in Grand Rapids two weeks ago to the semis today. He is the subject of this week's Miller Highlight. Get to know them. Doug Kent. I started bowling when I was about five or six years old. And I kept looking for the better junior leagues and I just kept progressing from there. If there was ever a sport that I thought I was gonna try professionally, I really thought it would be baseball. I turned pro when I was about 19, 20 years old and I started to bowl some regionals and I decided to give the national tour a shot and the rest is history. My greatest moment on tour has got to be winning the world championship last year. That was uh, probably the thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> Pizza's probably my favorite. Any kind of pizza, as long as it doesn't have uh, mushrooms on it. I used to fish a lot. I don't, I don't fish too much anymore, but I started playing a lot more golf this year. I own a bowling center back home, so I work dead a lot. I collect some sports cards a little bit. I, I really got into landscaping a lot more this past summer. I did a lot of stuff around the house, and, uh, which I really enjoyed. A lot of young talent coming out this year. No, you can't take anything for granted out here. <laughs> Doug Kent, the subject of this week's Miller Highlight, gets it over. Next, he takes on Norm Duke, second USA TV show of the season. Also made the show in Grand Rapids a couple of weeks ago where he lost to Eugene McCune, the eventual champion. He wants to win again and make more history. Here on Long Island today against Doug Kent next. At the 2002 PBA World Championship, Doug Kent recorded his fifth career win in Toledo, Ohio, along with a $120,000 first place check. He also won the 91 ABC Masters in Toledo. We are set to go back in Long Island and joined by Norm Duke. First, we look at the bracket. See Norm getting set to take on Doug Kent in the semifinals and a shot at the championship match. Norm, you told us yesterday how much making the Tournament of Champion field means to you. It's a real passion. Why is that? Well, it's our largest tournament. And, you know, I've been out on tour for a long, long time, and I've enjoyed bowling that tournament a number of times. And not, to not be a part of it, it's something that, uh, that I just yearn inside, wanting to win a tournament to get back. For you on TV day, confidence is a big issue. How do you feel now? Is it hot? Yes, it's very hot. Randy, he appears ready, looking for another championship, perhaps his 20th of his career. Well, Dave, Norm told us last night that the driving force, we'll show you the graphic a little later, his last four tournaments, 
the push was just trying to get back to the Tournament of Champions. You know, with 19 titles, not only does he deserve sure. to be there, but he should be there. And, and with the new format and the new qualifications for the Tournament of Champions, the only way you get back there is by being the most 26 most recent winners. Ninth, third, ninth finals this week. And that's what he's done. TFC has been getting back to the Tournament of Champions is been his driving force but he'll have his hands full with this guy right here very cooperative pins here mr. Ryan head pin goes to the side wall the side wall takes care of the seven pin that light hitter that Swiss zone very nice and look at the eyes and look at the focus of this man. Future Hall of Famer, Norm Duke. Claims the confidence is at a high level. However, comes in a bit high there. A little break to get eight pins down. Three, Actually, 10 up. Excuse me, Dave. Actually, a bad break because the pin rolls over and knocks the six pin out. And now that creates a split. You'd make this the same way you would have made it if the six pin was standing there. But now he's got to get the ball. In between the three and the ten pin, cover both pins with the ball. He's going to throw it straight at the spare, or the split, I should say. Here's goals, getting to and winning majors. Big cover there, and becoming PBA Player of the Year again, as he was in 2000, winning over two million dollars. Long approach, and on Duke, on lane 27 is perfect. And a very similar line to the, to the Dave Traber line. That ball there looked like it was just a, a pinch faster than the ball that he threw on the right lane, which would make sense. That ball holds its line. The one on the right lane went high. Just a pinch left of where Traber was playing, right around the 6th, 7th board. Same result. And Doug Kent's going to be playing left of Norm. And that was the beauty of this lane condition this week. You could play all over the place. Get up. Yeah. Talk it to it, baby. You see, to me, when watching Doug's, Doug Kent's career over the years, it's always been about one thing, Doug Kent, and the, and the confidence, his mental confidence that he has in his ability. When his confidence is high, like it is now, because of what he did when he went home and worked on his game, he's almost unbeatable. Because personally, I think he's got one of the best physical games out here. He can do anything to a bowling ball he wants. Straight, like Dave Traber, or hook the entire lane like Jason Hurt. Versatility and variety can help you a lot as the lane conditions vary. Double wood there. That's his spare to contend with. This year, slim in the earnings department after a great season a year ago. 120,000 of that 189.10 came at the World Championship. Yeah, that's a nice hit. I'll say. Still, that puts him at $69,000. He's only won six grand. And he's, he's struggled with ball reaction early on. They had a staff meeting, came up with some new drilling configurations, and he's back. It's all about ball reaction. Covers the 2-8. Then Shinano Wim changed the layout of the ball yesterday, and he's sticking with that through the wild card match victory. And now into the semifinals with Norm Duke. Tied for ninth last week in Philadelphia after a great showing in Grand Rapids. And it, let me show you why Norm Duke is as great as he is. Well, watch the swing arc. It's going to be this ball in that arm going like that. Just a perfect pendulum. And nice round arc at the bottom. Number 17th, Randy Sorry, 220-2206 loss to Eugene McHugh, who won his first ever title. And he bowled a great game. He did. That first ball in the, in the first frame was definitely a lot slower than the last two. Strike here, 12 pin lead. <laughs> what a huge break. That ball went high, trips a 4 7 10 out. Now, if it would have been the slower ball speed, that would have been a big, ugly split. He got it, the ball left, but speed is one of the things that controls the amount of hook, it reduces friction. 
The harder you throw it, the less chance the ball has to hook. Doug Kent head to head with Duke as you heard Norm whispering to himself, just stay with this game plan. There's a special format that gave him a tie in Virginia Beach, 95. See, and what I see early on now. Hey, hit him, he gets him. <laughs> okay. Well, Doug's reaction is a little bit different than his first game. It looks like he's moved in a little bit more, which is what you do when the lanes get a little drier. What I think Doug should do is he should move right where Norm is and start firing it like he did last night. Looks for a mark for Brain. He's got that. <laughs> more than capable of playing the lanes exactly. Fair in this game. Exactly the way Dave Traver and Norm Duke are playing them. More than capable of doing that. We watched it last night. Mentioned Doug has not won since the World Championship. I asked him last night, do you think about that victory a lot? Because it had been so long. He said, really, I think about the layout. How I was throwing the ball. Ball reaction more than anything else. Equipment, technical aspect of his game, which goes back to what you're saying. He's a student, always learning and always teaching. Get up there. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. That's better. That's better. Bob Cassis is the AMF Bowling District Manager. And thanks to... Bob and his great staff, they have been perfect hosts for all the PBA officials and the players all week long. Our ESPN crew, very hospitable. Come on, Norm, right here. You heard him just say it. Needs help. Gets help. The harder a player throws it, the harder it is to stay in the posture. Now watch this. Watch him come right out of this posture. He's flaming it. For a guy of Norm's size to throw it that fast, he has to use his body and his legs to create momentum to the foul line. Can't do it with your arm. <clears throat> Real soft hand at the bottom of the swing. Get those feet moving. Create momentum. Randy looks here for a four-bagger. And a 33-pin lead. Make it a five-bagger, right. 33-pin lead if he gets it. He's got another one. But a late help on the seventh pin. He'll gladly take it. 33-pin lead for Norm Duke from Claremont, Florida. Head-to-head -head with Doug Penn from upstate New York. Semi-finals here on Long Island. One off to the championship round to take on Dave Traber. To our Randy Peterson won in Philadelphia a week ago, event number nine of the PBA Tour. Who wins number 10? Here on Long Island, Dave and the Pepsi Open champ, Randy Peterson. The entire ESPN PBA crew with you. Doug Kent down 33 pins to Norm Duke, and let's check in Randy with the Dexter approach. I'm going to show you why Jason Hurd creates all that power and leverage. He's a big man, he's got a big long swing, but I'm going to show you two reasons why he has all those revolutions in power. One of them is right there. He's got a bent elbow right here. Go ahead and roll tape. But at the bottom, that arm gets nice and straight. It's a yo-yo effect, kind of a snapping motion, creates a lot of revolutions. The second reason is this. Watch the direction of his footwork. Seven step approach, watch the fifth step. It goes straight left, it goes in this direction. And what that does is it helps to open his hips up. Go ahead and roll. And watch that ball feed right up underneath him. He's got that nice traction heel here. This week, the approaches were a little slick. Had to get a little more traction for that plant and wheel effect. Jason Hurd, subject to this week's Dexter approach. Doug Kent dispatched of Jason pretty easily in the wild card match. Now trying to march himself to the championship match to take on Dave Traber. Norm Duke has something to say about that, though. Doug Kent in the pocket. Well, through six frames, the players have only missed the pocket once each. Now Dougie's using that same Norm Duke technique, that Swiss zone. I was re real interesting talking to Norm earlier. When, when you know we when the lanes get real difficult, you know people ask you about, well, you know how you play in the lanes or what should I do, and we always say, well, let your ball be your guide. Norm's response: guide your ball. He's in charge. Yes. Always. You never get the feeling he's not in control. The SBN in sync. Oh! 
He'll take a late trip on a four any day. Got that ball in. He was waiting for a little break, and he sure got it. He said, hey, if Norm can catch a couple breaks, so can I. And that's huge trip four. But here's the guy working on five in a row. Leads by seven, or 13, rather. Seventh frame. Strike here. He's up 23 pins. Got it. Next week, December 8th, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, the road of the PBA Championship rolls on. The tour moves to Siena College in Loudonville, New York, near Albany for the PBA Empire State Open. The action starts in Latham, New York throughout the week, then Arena Finals at the Siena campus. And log on to PBA.com for tickets. They are available. Empire State Open Championship matches take place near Albany next week, 1 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. Dave Ryan, last night, Norm told me the hardest thing for Norm is managing his game. Shot making, bowling balls, and strategy. Right now, he's doing a pretty good job of managing. Desperately wants to get to the Tournament of Champions in two weeks. That's a step in the right direction. And if you don't think this guy wants to get back to the Tournament of Champions, watch this reaction after this strike. If he gets in, Steve Hoskins is the next one to be knocked out. His last championship more than two years ago. Mike Albee has not seen on a show all year. Steve just one TV show that we've seen on the domestic tour to this point. And if you're wondering why you didn't tune in last week, why Norm is not in the TFC, because of me. I That's right, him Randy knocked him out with his first win in three years. You know, I feel his pain, though, because Dave D'Entremont knocked me out the first week. First USA event, that was Wichita. I've not seen Dave on a TV show since. <laughs> Look out. Catch, catch fire here. That's when you get the monkey's foot out, you get the chicken bones, and you start scratching yourself with all that stuff, and then this kind of stuff happens right here. Talk about the voodoo. What a great break. That ball, could, that could have been eight. Ugly split. That could have been anything. It's ten. And I actually carried a hit so similar to that last week against Blaze Bedoya on the TV show. we will gladly take that. Looking for a five-bagger here. Can't get a hole. Oh, 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 another big break, Doug Kent. Looked like he moved right, went a little firmer, a little straighter. That ball just never hooked up. Somebody, somebody's on my side. Let go. Wow. Well, he turned three in a row and spare, spare into a five wow. bagger to cut Norm's lead to 13. You know what? As focused as Norm is. A lot of players would let that enter into their, their psyche. This guy doesn't phase him. Looks for an eight-bagger. Does he have it? How about his? Two. Pin stays up. All right. Here's the deal. He, Norm goes spare. He strikes out in the 10th frame. He shoots 269. The best Doug Kemp can shoot, 267. Norm controls his own destiny right here. And that was his big message to us, Randy, last night. He wants to be the one in control, dictating the action, and with the ball in his hands in the key moment. Well, he's going to step up in the 10th hey. frame. Hey. He's going to tape up right now. He lost that ball off his hand a little bit. Norm is constantly fidgeting with his thumb holes to get just the perfect fit. But you know what? Norm had the quote of the year last night. He said, sometimes you're the dog, and sometimes you're the hydrant. <laughs> And we're going to see in the 10th frame if Norm's going to be the dog or the hydrant. What's put, he working on here, Eddie? He's putting tape time. in his thumb mm -hmm. to get a good feel. <sighs> then he changes his mind, maybe to buy himself a little extra time. If you go to tape, it's not a shot clock violation. He says winning a major stays with you for up to 10 years after. It's like winning a golf major. Same sort of thing. Hey. Now he will go to the table. Well, heck was that? Doug Kent now can win by doubling in the 10th frame. Norm needs a spare here. 
with a spare strike, Take he'll time. shoot 257. That'll Take. force Doug Kent to get the first two Take strikes. Mark. So even though Norm makes his spare, his fill shot is very, very important because they're both working on the same count. If Doug gets up in the 10th frame and strikes on the first ball and gets nine, Doug would lose by one pin. That's if Norm strikes on his fill shot. You're killing me. Come on, I want to spare. Everything's got to be perfect. Because Norm can do a lot of different things with his hand. He doesn't need to go to a, a, a lower friction ball or a plastic ball. He can do it with the same ball he's using for a strike ball. And covers, gets his mark. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven, Trying to implement what he calls seven, the double. Duke Law. Big shot of death. Well, this is the moment for the Duke Law. Thank you, Which is essentially being in control. Being the man. That's how he defines it. All right. Liked it. Oh! Oh, don't do that. All right, well, here's the situation. That's 255. Doug Kent needs the first strike like in the 10th and nine spare to win by one pin. He thought it was good. It looked a little bit left. Certainly was good enough to get at least nine. Got eight. Strike, nine spare. Doug's a winner. We saw him do it last night against Chris Barnes. Let's see if he's got any left in the tank. There was a big crowd here last night in that round of eight thriller. The 2-0 lead on Barnes. Chris came all the way back. Now try to dispatch it, Duke. Norm Duke's the winner. This ball looks pretty good, and it starts to kind of roll out right before it got in front of the head pin. What a great, what a great game both by both. I watched the ball go a little bit further to the right and then watch it quit. Here it goes, it's gonna start the hook and then it just stops. Finds the pocket there, but one ball too I'm late. be able to throw on the pair. Norm Duke, the PBA's Dave Schroeder talking strategy already, he's thinking ahead. He's made the championship match head-to-head -head with Dave Traver. It comes your way next. Either Dave Traver or Norm Duke will take home $40,000 to the winner, 20 to the runner-up here at the Cambridge Credit Classic, Sausset Lanes on Long Island. Welcome back, everyone. Dave and Randy. Norm Duke, you know very well. You've been on tour 20-plus years. You've known him 20 years. Dave Traver, you know as well as anyone. You're his roommate on the road. How does this one shake out? Well, unlike football, there's no defense in our sport. And you're, you've got two guys that are going to play the identical part of the lane. Norm Duke, the 19-time winner. Dave Traber, well, you know, only four titles. But let me tell you something. I room with Dave Traber. He's a great guy off the lanes, but he is afraid of no one. Hmm. You can tell focus for each is crucial. And also crucial is getting to the Tournament of Champions for Norm Duke. Dave Traber trying to win a title as a low qualifier. Randy mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. He barely made it to the round of 32. Thought, in fact, as he packed up his gear, he was done. Now he's in a championship match with Norm Duke. Last week, our very own Randy Peterson made his way to the championship match against Chris Barnes by going undefeated in match play. He would take that momentum and run with it, beating Barnes and becoming the PBA Pepsi Open champion. With an emotional 13th career win, Randy Peterson became the 24th millionaire in PBA history, winning last week in Philadelphia. Plenty of emotion in the building last week in Philadelphia. Plenty here on Long Island as well as Dave Traver and Norm Duke go for a championship. Dave, we'll start with you. Norm over here has won 19 titles. Is there any intimidation for you at all in this match? Do you feel like you may be inferior, or are you confident? No, when you're bowling the best, you got to beat the best. And that's how you get better, and that's my goal, is to beat him, then I know I'm better. Best of luck to you. Norm Duke, we talked about Tournament of Champions a few moments ago, and the Duke Law. Has it taken over now? How do you feel one step closer? I'm intimidated by Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I'll tell you in another game. Okay. Steve. We'll perhaps see you afterwards looking for his 20th title, Randy. First time they've ever matched up on TV with a championship on the line. Well, I think that's the first time that I've ever seen Norm uh, short for words. He's always uh, been one of our best interviews. It's going to be very interesting. This match, two flamethrowers going right at each other, playing the same line. <clears throat> If Norm is just that focused that he's just at a loss for words. Well, we're going to about to find out. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah, we That's started what we're talking about right there. Show him what it's about. Started off with a messenger. However, I've changed the name to flight attendant. Bye bye now. What do you think, Dave? I right? like that. You like that? Kind of like 60 feet of success, right? I mean, oh, I love 60 feet We've got to throw success. some new terminology at the game. Confident and focused on it. Gets the five. These guys are going to hit the pocket a lot. As you see, who's on the bubble? Steve Hoskins will be eliminated today. Just talked to Steve a couple days ago after he had been knocked out on Friday night. I was trying to head back home to see his family before going up to Albany. And he knew there was a good chance he'd be knocked right off the list for the TOC. Only one more event next week to get back in. Norm Duke wants in. And he's in the pocket. Beautiful shot by Norm Duke. That ball went a little bit further to the right, but his hand was so good at the bottom, it got the ball to check up halfway down the lane and watch the six, second to your right, cut the ten and half. Richard Puccio, Cambridge Credit Counseling Director of Strategic Planning. Thanks to all the folks at his company. Great job they've done in helping us get this event together. What a crowd we've had on Long Island. Very enthusiastic. Yeah. Yes. They were enthusiastic about that ball in the pocket. Oh, another shot like that. From a round of 32 on at this bowling center, amazing, Randy, to see how many people were spread out watching you in action, getting yourself to the round of 16, and a big crowd waiting to get in for TV day this afternoon. Dave needs to keep his emotions intact, not get too fired up. When you're throwing it straight and hard like Dave does, one thing you have to avoid is getting too amped up and overthrowing. Stop! Yeah! Break yeah. on the four pin. He hoped it wouldn't cross over. It was going high. Yes. He commanded the ball. When he said stop, that meant to stop hooking. And he, you know what? No matter how good you are, no matter how good you throw, you don't win out on tour without having some good breaks. And that was one right there. Triple for Traver, double for Duke. Strike here, evens it up. It's high. I'm going to have to change the tape again. He's got a lot of trouble with the, the feel in his thumb hole, and you can't repeat shots when the ball doesn't feel right shot after shot. He wants to get the ball over into this zone, have the ball deflect off the three pin, and drive into the 10. Mm. Pretty low split percentage, but this week, because the lane's being so tough, you didn't leave yourself a lot of makeable Big splits. Shot. This one, however, is makeable. He made one in the game against Doug Big Kent. Shot. You were going to say it. Big shot. Can you cover it? Yes. When you have a spare, excuse me, Dave. When you have a swing as good as Norm Duke, it's, it's real easy to direct the ball on the intended line, as opposed to a swing that goes all over the place behind you, bumps out. This guy's swing not only is it so pendulum, but it's very, very straight. All right, Norm. It's on second cycle, I think. Looking for 20 titles. He's won three majors. We talked earlier about. 
Now for him, the majors being player of the year again, as he was in the year 2000, is absolutely critical. Something his career will always be remembered for. Wants to make the big shot. Four pin. And that just looked firm. Oh, look that, a little residue from the shot before that. Shot, the shot on the right lane goes high. All right. That enters into your mind. You get up the next shot. You go, well, let me give this one a little more gas. I don't want it going high again. After two strikes to start off the championship match, a couple of spares for Norm Duke. Dave Traber has three strikes to begin his championship match. Trying to win his fifth career title, head-to-head -head with Norm Duke from Claremont, Florida. We have more of the championship match coming up next. Live coverage of the PBA. Hey, continuing a 40-year relationship with this great bowling area. Really a hotbed. Long Island, New York, just about a half an hour from New York City. And a few hours north next week, Empire State Open comes away at 1 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. The finals will be an arena setting. And for tickets, you can log on to ESPN.com. And for the Tournament of Champions the following week. That's at Siena College in Loudonville, near yeah. Albany. All coming your way next week on ESPN. Traber in search of a four-bagger. In the match and a 23-pin lead. Some beeper. Somebody's beeper going off. You know, they were told, turn off beepers, cell phones, or you'll be severely reprimanded. Get him traded. <laughs> All right, regroup, take a deep breath, back to your pre-shot routine, and let it go. Throws it hard. See ya. And that one went high. Excuse me, light in the pocket, and off the pocket. That was an unforced error. The one, the one place that Dave Traber can't miss is right. Because he doesn't have the hand, he doesn't have the revolutions to get the ball to recover from there. Make your spare, put it behind you. You'll still be 10 up. Trying to continue on the set. Spare conversion rate has got that. Last couple of weeks, we've been working on Dave Traber's game, and it started to feel real good last week. He just missed the match play, or the round of 32, by about 12 pins. Prior to that, he was struggling. He was kind of up and down the last five or six weeks. All right. Up 10, regroup, make a better shot here on the left lane. Much better shot on lane 27. Dave's lots, lot straighter, a lot further right than most. Very simple game. Four-step approach. Gets the ball in the swing up and down, and that ball is buried in the 1-3 pocket. Incredible consistency. 14 seasons running. There's a seven pin for Norm Duke, who's working on a spare. You know, we talk a lot about guys' physical games and, you know, what they do to make the ball get to the pocket and all this, that, and the other. But I think the thing that we, we don't talk enough about is the mental game. And what are guys, what's going through their mind? Because it's, it's the mind that gets these players or allows them to throw the ball the way they've trained their body to throw it. You think when you're starting to think about all this, that, and the other, getting a TSC forty thousand dollars, it makes it tough to pull the trigger and make good shots. Take again. Norm going back to the tape. See, you know, to me, another distraction. Get it right. You know, he's got enough to think about, or enough to, to pay attention to, just getting up there, making good shots, looking at his target. Just another distraction. This is going to boil down to the guy who's able to manage his mental game the best. This is live coverage of the PBA Tour. Cambridge Credit Classic, Syosset, Long Island. Been a very good year for Norm Duke. Forced to finish. Chicago 51st. Other than that, he's been very consistent. Watching on ESPN NC. 
Ten pin. Boy, what a good shot that was. All right, those are great, man. They sure were. I like both. Ring and ten. Yeah. Move to the far left to give him the best, give him the best angle to make the spare. Tied for ninth in Detroit and Pepsi Open in Philly last week. Gets his mark. Just 12 bowlers in history have won 20 titles. And this would be huge for Norm Duke into the Tournament of Champions. Dave Traber's worried about number five right now big, in his career. Excuse me, Dave. Big shot right here working on a strike six frame. Take a 22-pin lead. Yeah. Yes. Lush in the pocket, 10 in the pit. Much to the PBA World Championship, top eight. Get themselves right to match play round of 16 automatically at the World Championship in Taylor, Michigan in March. And on the line, first place for 25,000 points. 20,000 clinch from our championship match today. Chris Barnes will take over the lead. For a good showing here on the island. Yeah. Next week's standings. Right now, it's Traver and Duke. They're coming to you from the AMS Syosset Lanes in Syosset, New York, Long Island. Cambridge Credit Classic. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew with you again this week. PWBA shootout. Women's bowling is coming your way next as soon as we're finished with business. First, we've got a tournament champion. Well, Dorney answered the call after the two flush hits that Dave Traver just threw. The light hit, four pin, the last to fall. Norm knows what he needs. He knows that by striking out, he'll shoot 245. <clears throat> Dave Traver going at a 237 pace. Down 22 to strike here and gets it. All right, there's still life. That gets him into the two teams. Puts him 22 down. if Norm Duke can impose his will or his law on Dave Traver. It was quite interesting, really fascinating, speaking with Norm yesterday about the emotions, not only with the TOC and winning majors again, but the Duke law philosophy. Hold! Oh, oh, Four oh. Pin late, didn't get tripped up. Boy, and that would have been a huge strike and a, what a, a devastating break to Norm Duke if Dave Traver would have carried that hit. A spare here, he's still in the 230s. Striking out ninth and 10th frame for Dave Traver, puts him in the 250s. 256 the match for Traver right now. Take a look at the different follow-throughs here. Same line. Traber's follow-through goes a little bit more to the right. Norm Duke's follow-through almost always goes in the direction he's trying to throw the ball in. Norm line 27. Four pin wiggles and wow. stays up. Boy, what a huge break for not splitting there. Dave Traber with a spare here. Be a 235. If Dave Traber strikes out in the 10th frame, it'll be 245. If Norm Duke strikes out, 9th and 10th, 245. Oh, my. Could we have a roll-off? Sudden death championship match. First time we'd have that this year on TV. I'll tell you, Traves had a, a chance to bury Norm in, in the 8th and 9th frame after throwing two beautiful shots in the 6th and 7th. Just went pack, pack. Those last two shots looked a little suspect. Now... In my opinion, Norm Duke strikes out 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. All the pressure on Dave Traver. In the night, looking for a triple. Take him! And maybe the break. 
like he's been looking for. But the wait and see, look how composed he is. He didn't get all excited, go crazy after carrying that hit. Let's see how this reaction looks. Carry, 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 carry. Okay, all right, now regroup. Settle down. Three huge shots right here. Strike in the foundation frame. What can we do? ESPN and Sink will show you. Big one. Well, you can see Duke's will. Duke's will coming to the forefront. That late 10 messenger. That was a ring in 10. That, that 10 pin fell very, very late. If Norm goes nine spare, it'll be 234. Dave Traver would have to strike on the first ball, spare. The second, he will win by one pin. <clears throat> if anything else, Dave Traber has to match whatever Norm does in the 10th frame. Still have a sudden death roll off possible. You know, the one thing that I always tried to do when I had a great player on the ropes, and I could take him out. I wanted to take him out. I didn't want to give him a chance to get back into it. Right now, Norm's back in. strikes in the 10th frame for Dave Traver. Anything less, Norm Duke is going back to the Tournament of Champions. Will it be your roommate becoming your roommate again? In Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Or is it Norm Duke's turn one more time? There's one. Needs two more to tie Norm Duke. Incredible drama. This is what you live for, not only as a viewer, but as a participant, as a professional bowler. Saw Brian Voss do it a couple of weeks ago when he needed two and a tenth to win. This is what you live for right here. Does he have another one? Yes! Incredible effort for Dave Traver. Women's bowling coming your way next on ESPN. But first, we have one of the best stories in a championship match we've had in a long time on the PBA Tour. One more to tie. Perhaps a roll-off. Does he have it in him? Dave told us he was motivated by your performance last week, Randy. How much? Yeah! Right there! That's what we're talking about! Right there! They each strike out for 245 all time! Unbelievable! I'm speechless! It's been a long time since I've seen two performances this good when guys needed it. Both, both players just coming through in the clutch. Our tournament director is Kirk Von Kruver. He will explain the sudden death Ladies roll and gentlemen, by PBA rule, all tie games must be broken by one ball sudden death roll off. The higher qualifier will get choice of starting lane 
and order. They will each bowl on the same lane. If they tie, they will continue to the other lane in the same order and alternate lanes until the tie is broken. Norm Duke, the higher qualifier, has elected to let Dave Traber go first on which lane, Norm? Lane 27. On lane 27. Good luck, gentlemen. Interesting. Now, I, I like the lane 27, but I think I would be the one that would want to go first. One ball roll off the higher seat selects. You heard Von Kruger tell you, Mr. Von Kruger, I'd want to go first. I like putting him on the left lane, but I, I would be the guy throwing it. The roll off begins. Well, you can't throw it much better than this. Perfect line. Look at his hand stand underneath that ball roll and just the severe ring and ten. That's all you can do. Threw it good. Just talked about it before. There is no defense. One of the best in the clutch ever, Norm Duke. He threw six straight strikes. Randy to finish. Regulation. Didn't like it. Box. I don't know what to say. Norm Duke is. We'll just let Norm Duke tell you what he's got to do. Give me your shot. A strike will win it. Nine, another round of the roll off. Anything less? Traver wins it. We're going to the right lane for another shot. Right lane for another shot. Don't go anywhere. We could be here for a while. This ball is really hard and really fast and a little left. And watch this. This guy wants this one so bad. Oh. One of the best matches I've seen in years. You know the pressure of a roll-off. You release the ball, you think strike, then you think, please get the nine. Trader again. Yes! Fruit salad, baby, come on! Yes! Forces Duke to strike. Right! Phenomenal break. That ball was high, looked like Norm shot, Norm got nine. Oh, Trader denied. He could have gotten seven. A strike, the roll-off continues, anything less, and Traber wins his fifth career title. Talk about pressure. Don't dare. Unbelievable. Like I said, one of the best ever under pressure. He went up there and just made one of the best shots he's made all week. Now it's back on Trabe's left lane. Who is the guy that's going to fold first? With the championship on the line, our first sudden death roll off on TV this year. Oh! Four pit. Now a strike wins it for Norm Duke. You give this guy Norm Duke too many chances. And he's going to take advantage. My prediction, Dave Ryan, Norm Duke will strike on this ball. A strike for the Tournament of Champions. Emotions take over. Norm Duke, a winner again. What a moment for Norm Duke. He wins today on the island. Be sure to join us next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern in Albany. Women's bowling comes your way next. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on ESPN.com. So long from the island.